DNA and the genome. Inside the nuclei of your cells is genetic information. Each of the 46 chromosomes within a human cell nucleus are made up of long molecules of a chemical known as DNA. Genes are small sections of this DNA that determine inherited characteristics. Each chromosome contains thousands of genes. The specific DNA sequences within each gene are what code for particular sequences of amino acids to produce specific proteins. We will look further at this in the protein synthesis nugget later in the course. Remember that chromosomes always come in pairs, as each chromosome pair will carry genes that code for the same characteristic. Humans have 46 in total, or 23 pairs. But did you know that different organisms have different numbers of chromosomes in their body? For example, potatoes have 48 chromosomes, and chickens have 78. Remember that we've said that DNA is a long polymer that holds the coded information. This information provides instructions for growth and development in every living thing. The letters DNA stand for deoxyribonucleic acid, and its structure is described as a double-stranded helix, held together by complementary base pairs. This means that there are two strands, or the backbone of the molecule, that are twisted. And between them, there are base pairs, holding them together like a ladder. DNA is a polymer, made up of monomers, called nucleotides, that pair together as the steps of the ladder. The backbone of the DNA strand is a phosphate group connected to a sugar. An organic base combines with these backbone elements to form a nucleotide. And as mentioned, these nucleotides are basic units or monomers of DNA. And each nucleotide consists of a deoxyribose sugar, phosphate group, and an organic base. Each nucleotide monomer can join with others to create a long chain DNA polymer. Now let's look at how nucleotides of two strands are joined together. Here is the sugar phosphate backbone of two strands and the bases attached to each nucleotide. You will notice that there are four different types of bases that can be part of each nucleotide. We have thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. The dotted line between the bases in the center of the strand represent hydrogen bonds holding the two strands together between the bases. The key to the structure and functioning of the DNA molecule is the way that these bases join up in a complementary fashion. So in complementary strands of DNA, an A is always linked to a T via two hydrogen bonds, and a C is always linked to a G via three hydrogen bonds. The genome of an organism is the entire genetic material of an organism. This includes all of the chromosomes and the genetic material found in the mitochondria. Mitochondrial DNA is separate to that found in the nucleus and inherited only from the mother. In 2003, scientists stated that they had been able to complete the sequence for the whole of the human genome. The project was called the Human Genome Project and involved scientists from all over the world to collaborate. This combined effort and use of technological advancements to chop up DNA and read the sequence meant this project was delivered two years early and under budget. The human genome contains over 3 billion base pairs and almost 21,000 genes, coding for proteins. This sounds like a lot. However, 
we know that rice has 36,000 coding genes. It is the ability to make different proteins from the same section of DNA that makes humans a more complex organism than rice. Since the initial research, scientists are also able to sequence genomes of hundreds of other species of organisms too. The sequencing of the complete human genome took several years and billions of pounds. Although it provided a wealth of information, there is still much more we can find out in further study. For example, a new study called the 100,000 Genomes Project sets it out to sequence this many people's genomes with the aim to find out as much as possible about human DNA. But why is it we've spent so much money finding out all this information about human DNA and the genome? Such research is significant for studies of evolution and organism classification, but also the treatment of disease. It increases our understanding so much that breakthroughs in modern medicine are already set to progress. For example, it has enhanced our knowledge of inherited disorders such as cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia, helping us develop new medicines or treatment procedures such as gene therapy. Understanding changes to the genome when cancer develops helps doctors choose the most appropriate course of treatment for each patient. And we have also been able to identify genes that increase the risk of diseases for individuals such as type 2 diabetes or heart disease. The project has also allowed us to look at the similarities and differences in genomes to work out the relationship between different organisms. This has provided further evidence for theories of human evolution and helped us understand human history by tracing migration all over the world by examining tiny differences and patterns in population genomes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Check out more of our content and remember to subscribe to our channel.